That night, as the household slept, Stripe awoke and nudged his four fellow Mogwai. Sharing grins, they sneaked past Billy and Gizmo and headed downstairs. A minute later, Barney was rudely awakened with a tiny punch. It was Stripe. The angry dog chased his furry assailant out the front door and onto the snowy front porch. Suddenly, Barney was surrounded by Mogwai. They pounced on him, threw him off the porch, and ran back up to bed, leaving Barney locked outside. When Billy finally awoke and rescued Barney, he noticed the five Mogwai sleeping like little angels. Something funny is going on around here. Late the next night, while Billy was working on a drawing, Stripe and his gang began to whine. Hey, what's with you guys? You've already had dinner. But the creatures begged even louder for food. Billy checked the clock. Well, it's still a half hour before midnight. I guess it's okay to give you a snack. Billy brought the hungry Mogwai a plate of leftover chicken. Here you go, guys. Bon appetit. All the Mogwai began to devour the chicken with a passion. All, that is, except Gizmo. Billy nudged the little fellow. Go on, Giz, get something to eat. But Gizmo frantically shook his head and whined. Something was wrong, and he didn't know how to tell Billy. Billy just shrugged. Not hungry, huh? Well, it's time for bed anyway. See all you guys in the morning. But Gizmo was too scared to fall asleep. He knew it was after midnight. He had seen Stripe unplug Billy's clock. The next morning, Billy awoke to find the five new Mogwai gone. In their place were five large, sticky green pods. Billy kneeled and examined the strange football-shaped shells. Wow, these look like big cocoons or something. What's going on here? Gizmo, you know, don't you? Gizmo just stared at the pods in terror, his tiny eyes filled with fear. Billy quickly dressed for work. I've got to go now, Giz. Keep an eye on these things for me until I get back. See you later. The shadows grew long in the attic as evening approached. Gizmo still watched the silent pods in horror. Then, one of them quivered. Its surface began to bubble and crack. The same thing happened to a second pod, and then a third. The pods were hatching. Gizmo shuddered as green smoke hissed out of the widening cracks. Then with a final burst, the pods opened and out crawled five horrible creatures. Gremlins. Gizmo backed away as clawed, scaly hands began to reach for him. That evening, when Billy got home from work, he found the house was a mess. The Christmas tree was knocked over, and the kitchen was a shambles. Billy had an awful thought. Oh, no. Could this be the pods? He raced up to the attic, his heart pounding. There, he found the same story. His room was devastated. The door was off its hinges. Furniture was smashed, and papers were everywhere. Even his girlfriend's picture lay broken on the floor. Then he noticed the torn, empty pods. They've hatched. And whatever was inside these things is big and strong and mean. They're sure not cute and cuddly like Gizmo anymore. Gizmo? I forgot all about him. Billy searched the room frantically. Gizmo? Gizmo, where are you? There was no answer. Billy looked at the vicious destruction of his room, and he thought about his helpless little pet. He slumped into a chair, shaking his head. Oh, no. How could they? Not Gizmo. Suddenly, there was a tiny squeak from the clothes chute. Billy rushed across the room, dug through a pile of shirts, and lifted a furry bundle. Gizmo, you're alive! 
the tiny mogwai hugged Billy warmly. I'm really glad you're safe, Gizmo. But as long as these terrible creatures are on the loose, no one is safe. It's up to us to find them, Gizmo. That was the end of book two of Gremlins. What do the new monsters look like? And what will happen when Billy and Gizmo catch up with them? Find out in book three, Escape from the Gremlins. <laughs>